going so welcome back everybody to the april holistic action some q a webinars where dr christina and i are here to answer any of your holistic vet questions or any vet question in general uh, by putting your question into the bigger context of balance, energetic balance, consciousness, happiness, and just the way the way the world works is the way our animals also can work. And we can also do that with um, our veterinary care. And I just have one request. I see a lot of people are unmuted. If everybody could either mute or actually, I think I can do that up here. Just have to unmute you, Dr. Christina. Actually, I'm um, Dr. Christina. I think you. I did. I just unmuted Great. myself. Awesome. Awesome. And do you want to get started with Christina? Monica? Monica has her hand up. Go ahead, Monica. Yes. I, I just want to thank you for having these webinars, free awesome. webinars. I really yeah. appreciate mm -hmm. it. I have a toy That's poodle. Cool. She's five years old. And she's been every few weeks, she'll urinate and defecate on the floor only at nighttime. I'll wake up in the morning and she's done it all over the floor. And um, I don't know what, why she's doing that, but she's on raw chicken and raw bones. When she doesn't get raw bones, she's on calcium seaweed. And I give her B12, barley grass, uh, veggie and fruit puree. So she gets meat once, one time a day, and then the veggie and fruit one time a day. So more, more important is what, uh, how long has this been going on? Um, maybe like six months. And what happened just prior to the beginning of it? Did you move, new people coming in, vaccinated? I think I switched her, I stopped giving, I stopped vaccines and I switched her to the raw diet. That's all I can so think of. How long before she started going in the house did you switch to the raw diet? How long before? Um, I guess she started around the same time I started the raw diet. She's been on raw diet about six to eight months, maybe eight hmm. months or less. And where are you getting the chicken? Where are you sourcing the chicken from? From the grocery store. I get her antibiotic and hormone free, organic. Oh, it's organic. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hmm. That was one thought I had was that there was maybe some hormones or chemicals or something in it. Um, so I'm not sure what's causing it. Dr. Jeff, any comments about what you think might be causing it? And 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 we'll talk about what oh, well. We kind of do know what's causing it is the underlying energetic imbalance. Um, but what might be but triggering is it? Is it related to age? Is it related to diet? Is it related to some other health issue? Is there any sign of um, any other cognitive issues, you know, brain or you know, confusion issues? Um, the only thing I notice is that she's an she's an anxious dog. Has she always been an anxious dog, Monica? Yes, yes. So that's not a change. It's improved, actually, since the raw diet. It's gone down a little bit. Hmm. And is there a particular time overnight that she tends to wake up or you just find it in the morning? Um, I'm, I caught her one time doing it two or three hours after I let her out to use the bathroom. She couldn't hold it for after two, three hours after that. Mm. And do you have you know, pee, pee pads in the house? No. Mm -mm. And have you had you know, any blood work or vet exam in the past couple of months? Probably, and she is how old? She's five. Yeah, it's really sort of mysterious, isn't it, Dr. Jeff? So we don't always know what triggers things. That's one of the things, but we can go ahead and treat it. Interimly, I would definitely put pee pads in the house at night. Uh, 
but the best the best treatment is going to be uh, doing good Chinese medicine or homeopathy, working with a veterinary homeopath, uh, because it is a little mysterious. And so I, I think you may need to dig in like that. Possibly even if you had a chiropractor nearby, you could use a chiropractor because sometimes the nerves coming out of the spinal cord can trigger problems. Um, so I would be recommending that. Um, also, you can learn a lot of energy methods. If you became a member of Holistic Actions, you'd have, act, you'd have access to all of the many, many energetic treatments that we have had speakers on. And um, that may be enough even in itself. So um, you may wanna start with that. Uh, any one of those. And uh, we have several. Uh, so are you a member, Monica? No. Uh, not yet. Okay. So you might want to check it out. And in order to find a holistic vet, if you go to holisticactions.com slash select, then that I is uh, an some article. With, uh, I've been using herbs. Holistic vet dot, holistic vet dot com slash select. No, no. no. Herbs, homeopathy. And, and, Anthea, you need to wait, please. Whoever is speaking other than Monica needs to mute themselves. Um, Monica, it was, uh, we'll put it in the uh, chat. It's okay. holisticactions.com slash select. Uh, one more thing. Um, what would be causing all the yellow stuff on her teeth? She, I gave her well, stuff to chew on. Again. You're doing, you are actually doing so much right. Okay. <laughs> that, um, you know, that should be keeping the teeth clean. So that shows that her energetic field is out of balance. Okay. Now, one thing I would do is after every meal, take your finger and just wipe the teeth. Don't worry about brushing, just wipe the teeth off. Okay. Um, and make sure that she gets some pieces of meat. You're feeding bone, you're feeding like chicken bones or neck bones or something like that. Or calcium seaweed. But right. if I don't have the bones, I give her celery sticks. Okay. Yeah, all of that, you're, you're doing the right thing. So you really okay. do need to move into working with the holistic vet. Thank you so um, much. At that point. Yeah, just, just, no, I would just make sure that it was not just a general holistic vet, but somebody specializing in an energetic modality like homeopathy or TCM, because right. there's all kinds of diet supplement things that can be done, but none of them address the underlying energetic imbalance. That's actually what I would start right away. Um, with your pup, Monica, and I'm just, you know, I know we're going uh, longer on this than we had to on some questions, but really applies to everybody. And that is, you can start raising your animal's energy and their ability, the body's ability to do its job in every way by focusing on their cellular joy. Which basically just means getting those cells as primed as they can be to do their job as well as they can do it. And you can do that easily by focusing on your individual pups, what they love to do more than anything else. By focusing on that love and that joy, bodies will, will then pick up and to um, best they can do. Like, for example, Monica, I'd be, you know, if your dog likes to go out and just sniff around, Maybe do a sniff walk before bed mm -hmm. or, or a snuff a mat before bed um, to help her sleep through the night or, or do it a couple of times during the day. Actually, more often is better than longer. So right. You can engage her every couple hours in a game or a sniff walk or snuff a mat or something like that. It would be very very helpful and you could start that right away thank you thank you thank yep. you while you're while you're looking for that for sure okay lily you need yep good okay hi i'm a little nervous <laughs> that's okay 
Um, just took my dog, Ru Ruby's a nine-year-old Karen Terrier. Her beam is good and just took her to the vet and she got her third year rabies, three year rabies vaccine, her fourth one. And they did a uh, blood work, a full panel blood work. And the uh, ALK phosphorus came back high, 626. And a year ago when we did it, it was uh, 293. So the phosphorus went up by to 626 and the ALT was high, 164. The calcium, 11.6. And I don't know how to say this, this is E-O-S-I-N-O-P-H-I-L-I-S. -I -I it was 12.60. So she had uh, four things that were high. Uh, I have been feeding her beef trach uh, lungs to chew on. And I started that at Christmas. So she's been getting more raw in her diet, feeding raw duck necks, turkey necks. And I, uh, I fix a feed a homemade diet and uh, she gets freeze dried ground turkey as a meal. So she does get a lot of raw. She has no symptoms except she does have mucus in her stool. And sometimes she seems like she's straining a little bit, but her beam is good. And the, the vet recommended putting her on milk thistle for the next six months and then to recheck the blood. So what's your advice? Yeah, Dr. I, Jeff, I, you're, uh, our, you're our lab man. <laughs> Go for it. Yeah, I mean, all we know, Lily, is that, you know, there are external and internal symptoms. And so if there are no external symptoms. I'm assuming her PIM score is eight or above. She's a happy girl, eats yeah. well. But, yeah. um, and if you hadn't done the blood work, and this is why annual senior blood work is so important. If you hadn't done that, you wouldn't know that something's going on internally that needs to be addressed like now, not six months from now, milk thistle or not. There's a ton of, of um, supplements that you can use that we can recommend, but and we can talk about it on one of our calls in the future on the forum. But um, two questions or one question, one word of advice. Was this run in the house or sent out to the lab? They sent it out. Okay. And my next question or statement now is, I would probably consult directly with someone like Dr. Foreman if you're in this area. On Monday, we'll have like a credible um, internist will make a definitive diagnosis. What's going on physiologically that we can you know, work energetically knowing a lot more about the disease. And if you're working with a fat homeopath, they can actually help to target different remedies are, are have a greater affinity, different organs in the, in the body. For example, is there primary liver disease? Is there, you know, something more nefarious? You know, high calcium is not something you commonly see with a primary liver problem. Okay. So that's why I asked the first question about where the lab work was run, because the in-house lab work Hmm, not quite as reliable as lab lab work. So it's great that it was sent out. And did they do a urinalysis? No, they did a stool sample, but no urinalysis. Stool sample came out, checked fine, but we didn't do a urinalysis. Okay. And she has, she has gained like five pounds since she was last there. So I need to re reduce the food. So, but her beam is good. She always cleans her bowl and that, Loves her snuffle mat, loves to go for walks, loves her belly rubs. I mean, her, her the beam is really good. Great. Awesome. And are you in an area where there is a, you know, an internist or do you happen to be in the Stanford area, Greenwich, New York? Well, I'm in Virginia. Okay. Well, okay. Uh, and um, so you're in Northern Virginia? No, I'm uh, north of Winchester, Virginia. Okay, so there are a couple of options, um, not in terms of specialists, Dr. Jeff, but there are 
uh, Dr. Jean Doyle is in Berkeley Springs and she's a homeopathic veterinarian. And um, Dr. Carol Lundquist, L-U-N-D-Q-U-I-S-T is in one of those towns near Winchester. Okay. Okay. <laughs> one of the rich ones, Middleburg or something like that. Okay. Um, and she does some chiropractic and acupunct uh, acupuncture. Uh, definitely those values are off enough that I would be pursuing it, but not rushing because being for everybody, when you have, when you're doing well overall, when the quality of life is good, then you don't have to rush immediately just because one set of lab reports was off. Even when there's a little bit of a trend here where the ALT went up. So, you know, did go up from last year to this year, but it gives you a breathing space where you can go, okay, let's see what's next. So you've set a goal of balancing the energy field. And this was for Mises question on allergies as well. And then you do your research and the research can be with a conventional veterinarian, maybe a specialist like Dr. Jeff was suggesting. And um, does Dr. Marin, would he do a consult with somebody with her via a vet, Dr. Jeff? I uh, mean, Dr. Foreman? Martin? Dr. Foreman, yeah. I, I don't know, but- Okay, my you'll find out tomorrow night, me, Lily, I, you can ask. I will, right. for sure. Yeah. And, and Lily, um, Right in the form, you know, where where in Virginia you are and if there are any specialty hospitals, because I think there's quite a few good people in your area. Well, Springfield, um, it's a little bit further, but yeah. Spring, Springfield, Virginia does have a specialty hospital. And then Dr. Kosen used to be at that hospital, K-O-C-E-N, and he does Chinese medicine, et cetera, but he's also in Springfield. So those are a little further away. Yeah. So should I get a urine analysis done? I doubt the, the internist probably could want a full, full database. They'll probably want to repeat some blood. And yeah, urinalysis is part of the minimum, minimum database. So when we look at any annual blood work, it's good to have a urinalysis at the same time. Okay, so I, I guess I, what I'm getting from you is I need a second opinion. Uh, well, you don't know. I don't know if I'd even call it a second opinion because you don't have a diagnosis. We have a description. You know, right. what, what they're going to get is a diagnosis or a presumptive diagnosis. And it may be that you know, a liver ultrasound is the next step. But you know, the, most, the very most important thing is what Dr. Christina said, that with a good beam score and a good quality of life, and happiness overall, it's not a not a big rush, but I wouldn't wait six months. Okay. And definitely post in the forum. The vet did mention something about an ultrasound, but she said they weren't very su 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 inclusive. She did mention that. Again, uh, that may be in the future. Okay. Right now, step by step. Okay. So I'd go ahead and post in the forum and then we can continue. All right, thank you. Yep, will do. Thank you very much. Thank you for the yeah, form. And form. Dr. Jeff and Christina, everybody should take advantage of this because the information you have on your website and what you give us, I can't say enough. It's a 10 over, over time and time. I just found you in February and you have been a blessing to me. More people should jump on because you have such good information and knowledge. I can't thank you enough. We're gonna get to those million people because we all need you. Good. Keep thank spreading you. the word. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, thank you. All right. Go ahead, Sherry. Unmuting yourself, I think. Hi. There you go. There you are. I, okay. We can hear you. Okay. Hi. How are you doing? Um, <clears throat> so I have one question. I have a Havanese. She'll be 15 the end of May. You, you know her already, Jeff, uh, Dr. Jeff and Dr. Christina. Um, She's doing really well, and her beam is is great. I think. Um, uh, in fact, she, um, for the first time, and I don't know how long, maybe ten months or so, she took out her toy and she pranced around with it, which really? is, I mean, to us, it's a sign that you know she's coming back, really coming back. The one thing that um, I want to ask about, which is something that the vet didn't know, except to say that it was 
maybe allergies is that under her throat and her um, her chin, she's got these uh, big scabby bumps. And she would get these from time to time throughout her life on her body. Um, and they would eventually go away. Um, you know, I'm really always kind of perplexed at what this thing is. People don't seem to know, but these are big. And um, I just thought maybe you'd have some some idea of what I could do. I've been putting silver gel on them, but I don't think that that's helping. Well, and the thing is putting something on it topically is fine to soothe her, yeah. but it's, it's not addressing the underlying imbalance that's producing them. Just a quick question. I'm sure it's not, you're not doing it, but just to double check, are you using plastic bowls at all? No. Okay. No, plastic and bowls can cause stuff on the face and chin. Yeah. Oh, the other thing I just say is that recently she got um, a massage from, from a person that does great work. Um, she's also been doing animal communicator regularly and she does energy work on her and she's been getting acupuncture. So she's, you know, she's, her energy seems to be moving around a lot. So yeah, I just wonder if maybe it's in diet or something. Well, here's the thing. Everything is from the individual is from the vital force being out of balance, right? However, in the process of healing, the vital force will often clean house. And if it can produce skin symptoms, skin symptoms never kill anybody ever. Dermatologists think they're the luckiest people in the world. People never get well and they never die. <laughs> so um, this could simply be the energy field healing itself. And as long as it stays like just a skin symptom, you can treat it topically just to hang in there with it. But I wouldn't be worrying about it because you've got so many benefits that are happening right now at deeper levels. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and sorry, I was gonna actually go exactly where Dr. Christina was, went, but I wouldn't say, don't worry about it. I'd say, applaud it. I'd say, good <laughs> right? job, yes. Phoebe. I mean, yeah. <laughs> pushing out those, toxins, you know, all the stuff that's allowing your beam to rise. Yeah. That's kind of the whole approach yeah. is, you know, not, not focus on the individual symptoms, but rather use them as a guide to the overall quality of life. And if we focus on that quality of life and beam and the, and the individual symptoms, whether it's, you know, a 15 year old dog or, a, you know, I mean, I just felt actually with the Havanese, a 17 year young Havanese this morning. Right. And um, yeah, it's, it really depends on uh, what they're doing yeah. with their days. Are they, is she having a good time? Yeah. yeah, I think she is. And you're doing a lot of stuff for her. Yeah, we're doing a lot. So thank, and thanks to you guys. I mean, you know, uh, really the education that some vets have, even though they're holistic, I mean, really, I wish that um, I wish there was more education for them because there's just so much information that you're offering us that, that they don't, I guess, have either have access to or time or I don't know what it is, but, exactly. um, you know, but we do the best we can with, with uh, what we have with our resources, right? And the, the one other thing I would say, Sherry, is just make sure that um, the acupuncturist you're working with is addressing the deeper energy levels, tongue pulse diagnosis and all of that, and not just little stuff, but yeah, you're, you're going in and you're going in the right direction. So, yeah, I don't, I don't think she does that. I, I okay. think she does just well, do the acupuncture. Then you, you may want to look around and, um, and, yeah. or, you know, homeopathy, one or yeah. the other. Absolutely. I'm doing that as well, actually. <laughs> oh yeah. You don't need to do the, well, you'll see. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome, Kim. Hi, it's my first time on here. Thank you for this. And um, Jeff, I joy in the cells. <laughs> it's everything. Um, so I had a dog before who taught me what I know now, pretty much. And we got into homeopathy, acupuncture, Chinese medicine. I'm now an herbalist because of that. He since passed, but I have a rescue dog that I got last year and she's seven and she has EPI, arthritis, you name it, she has it. They had her so drugged up. So I just took her. 
she's th when we got her we thought oh she might live a year <laughs> she's gonna live 10 more years she's doing great my quest i have two questions because i you know i need help with her diet i'm feeding her a great diet but she can't have any fiber or she significantly loses weight so it's a little kibble mostly with grass fed um i have to uh, um puree everything because she can't really digest her food so i'm i'm putting enzyme diane with her food i have her on some chinese herbs that have really restored her energy and helping with the arthritis yeah. But does anybody have any advice for me? Because I think we need fiber. She's getting bones and she's thriving from chewing bones and it's helping her teeth that are also in recovery mode. So she doesn't, she doesn't need fiber right away. If she's thriving, you're fine. Everybody needs different diets. And there are, if you go research out there, you will find people are recommending everything just like with people they're recommending all sorts of different diets. And the reason they're doing it is because each one made some animals very, very, very healthy. <laughs> you know, when I and had my so, other dog, I used to feed him, I got him, I first, well, I, I started on just meat, you know, and some bone yeah. and organs. And then as he got older, I realized for him, he was a lab, he needed right. fiber. And I didn't realize that until later. Everybody, everybody's different. And I wouldn't do kibble period. Just yeah. get rid of the kibble and just feed fresh, period. I mean, if you can. That, yeah. That no, it. I, when I don't, when I got her, I know I don't like the kibble. When I got her off of that, she, well, her, her stools weren't stable off of the kibble. So maybe I can try that now. You're right. I needed that just this call, you know, to say, get off the kibble. And her, when I right. feed her bone, she's fine. But you think just don't worry about the fiber with her. Cause she's not, looking not for grass fiber. and things like that. Yeah. Um, what how are, how are her poops? Um, sometimes they're really nice and formed when she has a good amount of bone. She loves bone. Um, but lately they're a little mucusy <clears throat> and not as formed as I would like. And she had been having this thing for almost the entire year of eating her stools. And I finally got her to stop by feeding bone. I think she was just starving, to be honest. And, you know, you can use, you can rely on a raw meaty bone diet for her. And does she just love, love, love bone, eating bones? Yeah. That might be her, that might be her entry into her cellular joy. You know, um, just give her at least, you know, one bone meal a day. Just, you know, a meaty bone, not just a a bone. And she's going to get all the fiber that she needs. And I also put a link in the chat there's an enzyme that you may want to try called Arxime. It does seem to do a really great job, especially when there's mucus in the poop. And I can say that, you know, because Archie right mm -hmm. here is a big mucus pooper and has chronic colitis and he does great on the um, on the Arxime. But like Dr. Christina said, they're all individuals. Great. So uh, Christina, Dr. Christina, thank you. I'm not going to worry about trying to get fiber in. She's yep. happy and like so great. And, and um, Jeff, so this RX enzyme, she has EPI. So I have her on enzyme Diane. Would I just start to play with this and maybe transition her off of the enzyme Diane? Exactly. Yep. Which yeah, by the way, makes her food taste horrible. And I really think dogs love to enjoy their food. It's been and they, do, need, so. they need to, and that's exactly. Transition it off and maybe try something different if you need to. I got some grass-fed pancreas, but, and I tried to do a little bit to replace the powder, but it, it didn't go so well. So I got, I just backed off, but maybe I can, can play with this. I have one other question. Mm -hmm. I'm on Cape Cod. Are there any really good holistic pets down here? So again, go to holisticactions.com slash select, okay. read the whole article, everybody, because then you'll understand why you have to go to every website, not just one. There is no one source of finding holistic vets and the websites are not kept up to date. So often right. the ones that are there are worthless, are not even existing anymore. So just be patient. 
and work on it. And off the top of my head, I can think of somebody in Rhode Island, but not on the Cape. Is that Dr. Doolittle in Rhode Island? No, not that one. What a great name. There's actually a Dr. Doolittle <laughs> holistic vet. She is. She's great. I went to her years ago. Well, I know we don't need one now, but as this doggy gets older, you know, the no, two local need, vets, they want to just do all the stuff. And I'm you, like, no, <laughs> you do need it now. So it now is the time for everybody to put together your holistic health care team. Don't wait until they're sick. But it's the so vaccinations, the rabies that I don't want. I've just spent the whole year making her this beautiful dog. And they're like, you've got to get her, you know, that whole thing. So um, if you go on to the Holistic Actions Forum, which everybody for free can visit, you can't post there, but you can read, put in rabies and rabies vaccine. And we've got a whole lot written about that. Great. Okay. And Thank if you. you a, if you become a member, you can post. <laughs> okay. Great. Thank um, you. I know you're welcome. Now, I know her hand isn't up, but Anthea, I think you wanted to ask a question and couldn't raise your hand. Is that true? Were you the one asking us about herbs? You can unmute yourself if you want. Okay, we'll check with you later. Um, Gita, you're next. Hi, doctors. Good morning. Thank oh, you wait, so much. I'm sorry. For this. I'm sorry. Gita, Gita, wait a minute, because your hand is up. Anthea got unmuted. Okay, Anthea. No, I did. Oh, no? Anthea, what, yeah, am I on? Yes, Can you I, are on. Yeah, I want to talk about um, feline chronic sinusitis. Uh, it's very challenging. I've been working with a, a cat now. Oh, for about nine months, we've done homeopathy, we've done herbs, we've done diet change, we've uh, done the nebulizer. Uh, just can't break through. And I know there's a biofilm that forms in the uh, cavity area, and that's difficult to break through. Have you... Um... Who, what's the name of the homeopathic veterinarian you have been waiting you've been working with i'm i'm the homeopathic veterinarian. Oh. oh oh you're a homeopathic vet a homeopathic practitioner yes okay well you know you may want to shift and um you know sometimes even i had to go to another veterinarian who had a different uh uh perspective because when you're case taking, sometimes you have biases that get in the way, and yeah, then that sometimes. throws and then that throws off your remedy selection. So um, my my suggestion would, would be that you work with a homeopathic veterinarian. Um, Dr. Jeff, anything in in addition to everything we've talked about here, Anthea, which you're probably doing a lot: feed a fresh food diet, happiness protocol, sniffing, um, energetic no, medicine. Yeah, okay. I mean, there's nothing specific. As you know, with homeopathy, there's not an answer for one specific. Yeah, I, I know. I know. I've been practicing it for 30 years. Right. Yeah. Well, I was just wondering challenge. if you had any suggestions. Take a good case and get a second yeah. opinion. Yeah, okay, fine. Thank you. You're welcome. Gita, now it's your turn. Sorry. Thank you for no. being patient there. No, no, that's okay. That's okay. Thank you for offering this session. Um, I have, uh, or we, my family has this beautiful four-year-old golden doodle. But before I found all of you, I already had her spayed and they spayed her at like six or seven months. She's so healthy and happy, except that she started to pee all of a sudden. And it happens sometimes. And when I took her back to the vet, they said, oh, it does happen sometimes. She doesn't have enough estrogen. And so they started to give her estrogen. And they were giving it to her every day. And then I tried to take her off it. And slowly, um, I found um, Dr. Jones uh, here in Canada and started giving her CBD oil, which really helps. So now I don't give her estrogen at all. You know, and uh, I went to once a week, once a month. Uh, but she still pees sometimes and she's not aware of it. You know, she has this happening. So I'm wondering, um, is there anything more I can do? 
uh, I don't want to go back to giving her estrogen. I mean, I, I wish, and also I wish they had not taken out her, her uterus. I mean, they took out everything. I think like for human beings, they just kind of take out or they just cut the tube, the fallopian tubes. Why wouldn't they do that for dogs? But I mean, I wasn't clear about all of this. Uh, I'm a new dog owner, but now I understand. And so I just want to help her. She, otherwise, she's really healthy and happy. I don't feed her raw food because I work with children and where I live. If I feed her raw food, she can't be around children. So I feed her food that I cook at home for her. So that's fine. As long as it's fresh food. That's really yeah, I, I cook for her. Yeah. yeah, just like we cook for ourselves. Yeah. I cook for her. Yeah. Right. Fresh food is fine. Um, I would say at this point that the CBD has been temporarily helping or palliating. It's not addressing the underlying energy imbalance. So number one is I would read the fundamentals course, the five lesson course, which will help educate you a little more for animals and holistic. And then um, I would work with one of three, a veterinary homeopath, a veterinary chiropractor, or a veterinary, really good Chinese medicine veterinarian. Um, because you've already done some early things. Now, the other possibility you could do until then, because this isn't life threatening, is you could pick up one or two, learn one or two of the energy modalities like Reiki, Web, Eden Energy Medicine, that type of thing, and try that yourself for a few months, even up, you know, six months, a year. But if that doesn't work, then definitely you need to be working with a professional. I, um, I would love to try homeopathy. I've tried homeopathy with my kids growing up. And I've tried a few medications for her and it really worked. Like she had diarrhea once and um, homeopathy worked. So I would love to try homeopathy next, but we don't really have a homeopathic vet here. And um, I live on Vancouver Island. So. so there are homeopathic veterinarians who will consult by phone. So go to holisticactions.com slash select read the article, and then you can access all of the homeopathy, ADH, PIVH, um, CIVT, and you can contact each one of them and see who's available. There are a few that I think I've already listed uh, in the forum, Dr. Herman, Dr. Cooney, um, that are at the AVH website. And they definitely, and I'm sorry, what part of Canada are you in? Vancouver Island, which is right where Jackie's Obando scene is. So I believe oh, yes, on Vancouver Island. Oh, I perfect. look up a vet called uh, Dr. Jackie, scene. Jackie's up there. I believe they're moving up to Vancouver Island. Yeah. Oh, okay. Wonderful. Um I, Yeah, I'm not yeah, she's up in the area. <laughs> and Thank is you Lisa very much. is Lisa Breen? Yeah, it'd probably Lisa. be best if you can contact her, that'd be the best. If she's there and otherwise those the um other ones as can help you as well and schwartz she's doing phone work yeah i don't know if Ann does but um she is but the avh.org will will let you yep. know and yeah and um good doc, dr messi you're a little distance for her but you're up in Canada region. She's on the call with us today, and um, I don't know if uh, she knows anyone. Uh, Veronique, if you know anyone up by Gita's way, if you would stick in the chat, that'd be awesome. Oh, good. And do you want to finish up? I love that. Miriam. Thank you very, very much. Okay. Miriam? Um, unmute yourself. There you go. Nope, you're not unmuted yet. Nope. Hi. There, there you, you go. are. <laughs> Hi, this is my first time. Welcome. Um, ever. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I have a question. Um, I have a uh, a sheep -a doodle she's going to be two in May. And um, last week we were traveling, I live in Vermont, and last week we were traveling to New Jersey. And while we were there, she was uh, going through quite a few things that I've never 
um, I, I couldn't I couldn't understand why she was going. So one thing is in the morning, she didn't want to eat her breakfast and she would throw up. By afternoon, though, she had she was hungry. She would eat she would eat her her lunch and her dinner. No throwing up. Um, and then there were moments when she would be just at rest and she would start to what looked like hyperventilate. It was like a, she was gasping for air and it happened a lot. Um, and, and she had a lot of sneezing. So um, the sneezing I just attributed to allergies, um, spring allergies, but um, everything else. I took her to the vet when I got back to Vermont. They did a whole blood work panel. Everything came back normal, except her white blood cells were a little elevated. And um, they asked for a stool sample, which I gave them a, a, a morning and an afternoon, gave them two just in case, because they thought it might've been a parasite, um, but it came back negative. So there was no parasite there either. Um, and I, now she, the, she seems to, it, it's it's it come and goes. So yesterday she was hungry. She ate her breakfast, no problem. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. She had no problem with that. She was energetic. She was playful. Um, today she didn't want her breakfast, but she ate it for lunch. Um, the hyperventilating, that breathing thing, has calmed down a lot. I mean, she probably had maybe one spell of that while she was here. They checked her kidneys, they checked for upper respiratory, they checked all that, everything came back fine. So I didn't know what to think of that. She was on a trip, she got stressed. Maybe. She was, it was, and who knows what the other triggers were, we don't always know. Sometimes the moon, the planets, the things that are very esoteric sometimes, the fact yeah. that she's responding to getting back home yeah, is really good. Once she's well at home, and you may want to do the fundamentals course, so you can see if you're helping, you know, if you're doing everything that we sort of recommend as a basics. Okay. Um, and there's no one, there's no one right answer. We're very broad in our, in our suggestions, okay. like feed fresh food, doesn't matter whether it's cooked raw, just meat, just fiber, da, 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 like that. So we're very okay. broad. Um, and that may build health enough that um, she'll that she'll do better. And um, but then I would recommend going on a short trip, go on a three day trip, you know, go to New Hampshire or to New York, go to Burlington, for New York. I mean, go to some other part in Vermont right. or go to New Hampshire just just to see, make sure she's OK with going on trips. And okay. then I would put together as we talk about in the fundamentals course, I would put together a um, a uh, holistic healthcare team so that you're ready if there are future problems. Okay. Dr. Jeff, anything else? I'm just, just curious how she was last spring, you know, when the allergy season started, how, how'd she do? Um, she, she tends to get, she tends to get a little runny nose. Um, there is some sneezing. I haven't found um, a homeopathic allergy remedy yet i'm searching um i think there's so there aren't any. i'm going to i'm going to interrupt you just um, i want to tell people there are no homeopathic medicines for allergy cushings diabetes limping itching there are medicines for each individual so each individual with allergies may need one of the four over 4,000 homeopathic medicines. So wow. you have to individualize it. If you become a member of Holistic Actions, we have a, an entire, we have six days of classes that I taught live that we live streamed on homeopathy and okay. several books on homeopathy that you can take worth hundreds of dollars. So if okay. you're really interested in homeopathy, you want to check that out. I will. Thank you. <laughs> okay. And um, just, so, yeah, just go ahead. One last question before you move on, or one last statement. Um, it's two different paradigms that we're looking at, uh, Miriam. Uh, the physical, this for that protocol based paradigm. And then, as Dr. Christina mentioned, 
the energetic or homeopathic paradigm where we're individual as like for every every individual. So two individuals that have the exact same symptoms may actually need two different remedies, mm. two different homeopathic medicines. And it's, you know, uh, if it's an immune imbalance causing, you know, a triggering or being triggered in a way that you're getting allergy symptoms and reverse sneezing, which is, you know, <laughs> like the, the respiratory noises that you may be hearing. You may want to be working with the vet homeopath um, intermittently. So she's young enough now where you may be able to restore balance and just not have things get worse over time. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Sure. Great. Linda. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Um, I have a, um, thank you for this, by the way. Um, I have a nine-year-old cat that uh, came to live with me at the age of six. And he has, about six months after he came to live with me, he developed an eosinophilic granuloma on his lip. I've had him to maybe four different vets. One of them is a homeopathic vet and worked with her for close to a year. Huh. I haven't had, he's on a raw diet uh, and he's very affectionate, but aggressive towards my other cats. Um, so I know that he has some problems with his energy, but I'm, I'm trying to figure out what I can do to help him out, uh, any other suggestions? So I did take him to one holistic vet. I don't have any right where I live, but I did take him to somebody further away. Who was the um, homeopathic vet? And I also, vet? I'm sorry? Who was the homeopathic vet you said you worked with for a year? Uh, her uh, name is Dr. Diane and of course, because I'm nervous and I have a hard time with names. I can't remember it, her last name. Was it Bochinsky? Yes. Okay. Yes. She's a good one. She's a good homeopathic vet. Uh, and, and unfortunately, at this point, she's retired. Tired. <laughs> so, yep. She has yes. retired. But yes. like I said earlier, even very good homeopathic vets sometimes have sort of blinders on and miss something. And so working with either a different modality or a different homeopathic vet can help. Um, so check the yes. article on finding a holistic vet, see if somebody is near you actually that you didn't know about um, that does Chinese medicine really well, really, really well, or um, switch and work with a different homeopathic vet. Is, is it about granuloma bothering the cat a lot? Um, I, he's, I think that he is in some pain, but he's he's got um, he's very hungry all the time. He's got a good appetite. I, I've never seen him refuse food. Uh, he's very affectionate. Uh, he's indoor outdoor. He's spends a lot of time just hanging out um, on the patio, enjoying the sun. So, you know. He, the one thing is that though he is very aggressive towards one of my other cats and um he's learned to live with i have three cats and he's learned to live with one and he wants to be affectionate with him but the other one he chases um, and you can also um check out one of our faculty members jean hovey her website is littlebigcat.com and mm -hmm. um, so you may find some there, some information there. And then um, flower essences can really help with behavior issues like that with cats. Okay. Yeah, so I've I used um, I've used Rescue Remedy. Yeah, there's the pet for, version. Yeah, you need a lot more, and you don't need the pet version. You can use the human one, but that's a minor thing. Um, I actually need to go everybody. I have to leave a few minutes early. So I'm going to turn, I'm going to pass the baton to 
Dr. Jeff and say bye and say bye to everybody and thank you all for coming and he'll talk about the future of this. Thank you. Too. All right. Bye bye everybody. I thank have you. Fun enjoying. So Conway. I'm off before we go on. Linda, any I mean, I would just say, you know, what what Dr. Christina ended with what is the eosinophilic granuloma bothering your kitty? And it sounds like maybe a Mincy is scratching it or rubbing his chin. He does. Or... He does. Um, he opens it up every so often. I would say every couple, three days. And I, it, my thought is that he is, um, that he, when it starts to heal, it starts to itch. And then he scratches it open and starts it all over again. It's pretty, um, I just worry about that it's degrading his upper lip to the point where it's starting to come really close to his nose. And that worries me. Mm. Um, mm. Yeah, so it's, uh, it. I did take I did take him to a spiritual healer. And she said that there was uh, something that he was reacting to on a property to the west of us that uh, was keeping him from healing and uh, asked me to to um, try to get that negative energy to release. And I tried, you know, went over and faced that direction and, you know, tried to do my best. But um, I suppose I could take him back to her to see. She's a good two hours away. So um, to see if, if he's doing any better. <laughs> but I don't know. Um, I, I really do think that, it, you know, being on the right track of that he's, his there is the energy imbalance but i'm not really quite sure where to go from here yeah before i make the trip i I definitely consult a, a new vet homeopath that will work you know virtually or otherwise and i only say that as my first go-to assuming that all else is well and assuming that you're already doing everything possible to raise up his energy and get him into that place of cellular joy. Um, I mentioned that because the eosinophilic ES granulomas are very, just like all all allergic manifestations, they're usually very, very um, treatable. So you should see a response to, to the remedies um, within a couple of months, if not sooner and okay. again you can do it virtually but you want to make sure that you know that you're fine-tuning everything else at the same time or even before you start doing that so and okay and like um we've done a couple of times you know if you haven't already read the uh, pet health 101 course the doctor christian was saying you know the fundamental course it's the Pet Health 101. It's free. It's um, kind of outlined the whole approach. Okay. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. And we're going to wrap it up soon in a few minutes. Um, Conway, are you able to, to unmute? Because I'm not reading your question right now. I want to... Um, should I? Okay, I'm not sure there actually was a question. Um, it was just you were sharing that. Okay, I'm sorry to hear about that situation. Huh. But anyone else have anything that you want to follow up on before I have to go as well? Mista, what you got? You're on me. Up oh, there, you are. Hello. Um, I know I was chatting uh, with Dr. Christina about allergy issues, and I have been working on my cat's beam for a long time, years, and she is FIV positive with cats. Um, 
and she has this kind of seasonal issues always spring and fall she has a scab all over and on the mm. paws too so um i think it is the pollen season in austin and we all have allergy humans um anyway my question is now she her beam was was okay for a few years but now this year starting this year this spring she is not eating um she lost completely lost appetite on some days and two three days without food just drinking and then she would slowly come back up and so anyway if it goes really shut down mode like this how do i go about from there do i do allergy testing to go completely different direction which cause you know what specific thing cause allergy and get the serum and you know try an error and experiment do that experiment with it or just do i do you know more holistic which i've been doing um i do energy healing I do kind of communication, all that. So I'm kind of confused now, but I want to help her. Yeah, well, there certainly is, you know, ways to help um, going on. And when she has one of those low, low, low periods, maybe those are the time for a happy dance. I don't know if we've ever talked about the happy dance, you know, where you put it in earbuds, play your happiest music and you mm -hmm. just dance around holding your kitty cat and your energy balance is going to affect her energy balance mm -hmm. that's really the um, that is the cause for all of her symptoms is that energy balance or energy imbalance um but the very first thing i would do and i'm going to sound like a broken record but the very first thing would be to start working with the vet homeopath mm -hmm. okay yeah, because you're doing everything else. Okay. You know, and, 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 you know, just work on that happiness and positivity and all the stuff that we've talked about. Mm -hmm. And by the way, Dr. Dr. Jeff, are you accepting private client now? <laughs> I just wanted uh, no, to throw working, it with, working with members. Yeah, working with okay, members. Okay, I'm a member. Okay, great. Yes, Thank right. you. Thanks. Thank you all. Thank you so and much. I just, oh, I should do this before we go. Sorry. Oh, let me see if I can find it. There's a, there's a code for anyone that wants to join HJ for 19 bucks and you know be with us for the month of May and the IB month. The code is happy 19 H A P P Y 19. Um and Monday does start the IBD bundle let me just write down the code and you can buy the the um bundle as a one-off as well or up oh, there you go thank you kim beat me to it um but so we're not going to see you guys in may we'll be on the webinars once a week and um we'll let you know if there are any upcoming q a's so thank you all thank you i really 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 appreciate um, you guys coming and Conway, thank you. Thank you all. Bye-bye.